Welcome back everyone to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. But we must have an assessment of the teachers' unions. One, of the planned landmark pieces of legislation President Johnson hopes to pass as a so-called Elementary and Secondary Education Act. While the draft is still rough, ESEA will increase federal funding to schools across the board as well as focus on parental involvement in public education. While his allies in Congress craft the bill itself and marshal congressional support to ensure its easy passage, the President himself has elected to meet with the most powerful teachers' unions in the country to ensure their support for his newest initiatives. One of the most notable demands with the unions is to relax federal control over the methods by which teachers may engage with students and teach coursework in the classroom. There already has been some strong opposition to, this, to such a proposal, as it may allow dissent and un-American ideals to proliferate among youth or young children and teenagers in our schools. Furthermore, promising such a reform may weaken our support among conservative Democrats and the staunchest anti-communist and anti-fascists. Others, however, posit that it may be a new radical step in allowing personalization of education tailored towards the individual needs of students and may overall improve the quality of education of our young people. Reform in education is part and parcel of establishing the great society. Perhaps we shouldn't go too far. Uh, the Senate grows stronger, which actually is not too bad, but we'll probably go reform in education. We're going to lose 25 political power, so I don't want to lose that much political power. So, <clears throat> I think we'll do is one of these for the great society with a couple comments to go through as well but let's see i want to expand the jobs court because it is now a presidential and, and senate election season so we have to be a little bit more careful that's why i already beeline for civil rights so if we do expand the jobs court we'll improve the social safety network in the country our industrial expertise will go up <clears throat> and our support in the southern states as well as in the rockies will increase which is good and now we're out of, we're definitely out of political power as you can see i'm a little worried about the election here just because uh, the West Coast, Republican Party incumbents, they're all toss-up. And probably going towards the MPP. Um, the Rockies are very RD, but it's a toss-up. And leaning towards MPP, so... <laughs> this is not looking good! So, if things go really poorly for us... I mean, as long as... My main goal is to keep at least LBJ in the presidency. And we can probably work around how many few Republicans and Democrats and Senate MPP that we'll have to work for the Great Society. We'll see what happens, there's no guarantees. Since we already went down this far anyways. Um, let's introduce the idea of social security. Uh, yeah, we'll wait for that until after the election probably. Because we'll probably need the Senate for those guys. But material provisions. That's pretty much it for now. That we can do since we finished everything else on the left side. So, the implementation of new education programs will doubtless be a costly undertaking. And one thing central to this initiative will be ensuring that schools are correctly stocked. To determine what is needed and where, an examination of the nation's individual schools is necessary. Once the census can be concluded, the process of apportioning textbooks and other classroom supply funds to state and local governments can begin so that every school has the tools for a modern, efficient education. Which is pretty good, and we have edge detection, and it is 1968. Nothing, nothing says educating the kids like improving your firearms, right? Air task ground forces, and we'll be done with our land doctrine. Very, very nice. Cool. And someone does, or actually, a couple people in the comments recommended that we should uh, get everything in the po as possible, and uh, you know, for the great society. So we'll do as much as we can. Obviously, as long as we, as long as LBJ wins the next presidential election i think we'll be okay i could be very wrong but if we don't win the election well then <laughs> uh i might pull up a few a few strings off screen but choosing your scottish nominee uh we'll probably go with a liberal option probably just a liberal option either one you do <clears throat> people won't like it so let's see and we still have too much because we need political power to lower the construction or lower the amount of construction we have wow we have 14 out of 13 factories in new jersey wow all right, I guess it's time for more uh, land force then. Cool. Complaints of federal overreach. Though. No head start has proven pretty popular among both general populace and among policymakers at every level of government. President Johnson has come under increasing assault by conservatives, many within his own party, that accuse him of tyranny for having overstepped his balance or his plans to greatly expand the mandate and scope of the federal government. Several southern governors, backed by the state legislatures and supported by numerous federal congressmen, have demanded that the president guarantee certain privileges in education that will belong to the states and the states only. In an effort to stem the tide of what they have termed increasing federal overreach bordering on federal tyranny, the president's supporters as well as northern liberals have urged Johnson to push forward in this program. Criticize, criticism be darned. Thus, determined as ever, President Johnson has continued to forge ahead on his legislative agenda. The Southern Democrats and conservatives generally within the party are none too pleased. Pr petty squabbling cannot be allowed to stem the tide of progress. Hey, who needed political power, right? And there we go. We can strengthen pro American sentiment. That'll give us a little bit more political power, which would be very, very good. If successful, we'll get some political power, which is extremely important. Recruiting guy, nice. No, oh, there you go. Nice, not too bad, not too great, but not too bad. 
After this one, excellent RD campaign. Fantastic. We'll do the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. After months of preparation and revision by the Cabinet, Congressional Committees, and various interest groups, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act can be proposed to the legislature. The bill contains numerous provisions, the most important among them being the apportionment of funds to schools throughout the country to improve education and the school environment how administrators see fit. Included also are in the bill's language is an encouragement for equality on racial and economic grounds so America's students can be free to receive a strong and equal education. Voters in the North, the Steel Belt and West will approve. Voters in the South and the Rockies will disapprove. Academic base will begin to improve. Temporary support from other senators is cleared. Oh, wait, we need to actually click on that. My bad. Yeah, wherever we campaign is not going to be very good for us. Oh, baby boy. Um, yeah. It's not good. Great society. It has definitely has a cost. Material provisions. All right. Oh, don't let them go on. Uh, I guess we'll do maybe Great Plains? No, let's do the Rockies. The Rockies are a problem right now. So, material provisions. The final stages of debates surrounding the ESCA has begun. How much money should be committed to the program? The growing coalition of conservatives who find themselves increasingly opposed to the president's education policies have requested a more watered-down appropriations commitment in the bill. Lessening the strain on the federal budget can allow for improved budgets of the Department of Defense or simply stave off any risk of budgetary default in the future. The president's allies in the Congress believe it is wholly likely for the bill to pass even with stronger financial commitment to primary and secondary education. The question is whether the president wishes to further strain his relations with the powerful conservative lobby within his party. For Johnson's part, he would sooner scatter the most vir virulent opponents to his agenda to the four winds, but, as Johnson learned in all his years in the Senate, sometimes in politics other considerations must be made. We only have one Earth, eh, that's government stuff. Cool. That's just other stuff that we can do up there, but whatever. Who needed political power? And then they are, ooh, countries in crisis, through the school system? They are our past, they are our future. Wait, can we do both, hopefully? Funding our schools? Oh. So, South and Rockies are not like this. Budgetary concerns. Rain fell down in great sheets over Washington. Lyndon, I cannot in good conscience allow this bill. President Johnson's hands were in his pockets as his gaze out on the South Lawn. A peal of thunder in the distance briefly overwhelmed the soft patter of rain on the windows of the Oval Office. Senator Russell was here again, voicing his concerns of the administration's agenda. With all respect, Lyndon, you must take care to respect the wishes of those constituents throughout the South, and not just mine in Georgia. A great number of good people do not think dumping millions in this program will do much to improve the welfare of these Negro children. Johnson silly drew himself up, his eyes alive. He snapped on his heels and briskly walked up to Russell, planting himself right in front of him. <clears throat> their noses were an inch apart, the buttons on their jackets were touching. As was Boom Senator, I do not give a rat's booty about those darn constituents. I have not met with every member of the Congress, held meetings with 20 teachers unions across the entire country, crafting this bill to perfection, just to be told no by a few bigots voting for a party to which I owe no allegiance. Russell froze, his lips tight, his eyes staring into the president's into the president's eyes. There was a moment of silence. Calmly, Johnson continued. Senator, I would ask you kindly to relay your, to your colleagues that my position on this is final. That is all. Okay, Lyndon, as you wish. Johnson turned back around, walking past the resolute desk, again staring back out the rain-drenched rain -drenched window. And you will address me as Mr. President. They will not crush us? Oh, boy. All right, so I'm going to let that just sit there, because I don't want to get any more political power just yet, or lose political power. Stability, political power, let's get more stability. Or political power. They are past. President Johnson has made one thing clear in his campaign. To revive and stimulate the nation's education system. We must fund education, not only during youth, but also beyond it. Through funding education in universities alike, we will create a system in which anyone can pursue a fulfilling career in adulthood, made possible by a robust youth education. It is through the people who follow their love and knowledge outside of school that we will reach the point, this point, and by using the contributions, we can create the next generation of innovators. Cool. Alright, let's get that one next. As well as some more, uh, what was that, law? The M72 law, very nice. The death of Salazar, campaigning the Rockies, very nice. And we'll get uh, some coffee. Not very, very good as well. They are our past, my friends. And you know what? They are our future. The importance of education on all levels cannot be understated. Through greater funds to American schools and universities, we can create new opportunities for people looking for higher education that, through no fault of their own, lack the means to pay for the tuition. Providing a full education to all who need it is not only a preference, but a moral imperative, as the people we help now will be the ones who create new innovations that revolutionize the world around them and move society forward. To neglect those with these skills would be absolutely unjust. Cool. Alright, so polls are a little bit updated, huh? Wow, Deep South has a lot of house support. The Rockies, still looking not very good. Oh, no. <laughs> we'll do the Great Lakes next, maybe, because I want to make sure the Great Lakes are really 
strong with us. So great lakes are up next. <clears throat> great lakes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd love to have political power just so we can make sure we get, you know, if we need to do things, we'll have enough political power to do stuff like encourage people to vote for us, but we'll see what happens. Oh man, some people are definitely losing their seats. Protect American interests? Sure, why not? Cool. All right, funding our schools, funding our colleges. Well, I guess we'll fund our schools first. But after we talk about infantry weapon improvements. Nice. The M16A1, very cool, very, very cool. And what do we have here? Moment to reflect, and no, we're okay. Funding our schools. The Elementary and Secondary Education Act has massively stimulated the flow of money from the federal government to America's classrooms, but one act can hardly cover an entire nation. Some states are more and more in need of aid than others, and to address individual issues, funds will need to be allocated via earmarks and other grants. Local administrations often face unique issues specific to the area that extend beyond low incomes. The Johnson administration will provide a helping hand to level the playing field. Operational success of the CCF victory in Canada. Is that a different picture? Huh. Well done, gentlemen. The Dominican Republic likes us more. For now. Alright, not bad. Uh, I think we just close out this one for now. We don't need to really see that one. And... Cool, we got seven days left for that. Expand our food stamps. I want to do that, but I want to wait to do some of this stuff just until after the election. So, I don't want to really hurt the, you know, conservative voters, but they're not going to vote for us anyways, probably. But decrease the poverty. If you'd like to remove that, please go right ahead. Great. Awesome. I wish you gave us more political power, but whatever. Um, increase among uh, our support among progressives, but decrease among conservatives. I don't want to piss people off way too much yet. We will probably in the next election. Well, maybe after the... 1970s Senate elections. Oh, come on, guys. A mediocre campaign? Oh, come on, R's and D's. <sighs> Typical R's and D's. Incompetent. Snapshots from Stonewall. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Uh, I've already read through this like two or three times already, so please go right ahead. They are our future and funding our schools. Establishing a teacher corps. Probably be really good. So. We do have 50 political power. Look at that. Wow. Oh, we can't uh, do that stuff yet. So, expand the Head Start programs. Uh, conservative base, conservatives. Because we're already going to hurt our conservative supporters or just hurt conservatives regardless. 150, that's not bad. I'd like to improve poverty even more. But poverty already increased once, so that's pretty nice. Sanction ocean dumping. Image will worsen coastal states but improve in others. Environment, eh, let's, we'll like that, which is not bad, but let's keep it PP for now. There we go. Oh, pause it. Mm. Pretty much we can campaign anywhere and hopefully we'll do okay, but like... Okay, so New England is leaning kind of okay-ish. Even if it's the MPP, uh, hopefully it's a center MPP, so... East Coast is looking okay-ish. The Great Lakes is still not looking great. Great Plains are looking okay-ish. Rockies are still a problem. West Coast is a problem. Let's go West Coast. Cool. Alright. Up next, funding our colleges. No, let's have a teacher core. <clears throat> Ooh, after we get some infantry anti-air. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we can do a lot of stuff, but let's keep our political power. The Teacher Corps is a new or next proposed program to kickstart education in low-income communities. <clears throat> Across the co country, through teachers' associations that specialize in community outreach, areas throughout the U.S. would each have individual projects headed by professors and institutions specializing in higher education who would then employ aspiring teachers as interns. These interns would then teach students in disadvantaged communities, thus helping to lift disadvantaged families out of poverty, the poverty cycle while gaining valuable skills in the process. Hopefully, the program will help both teachers and students. Very cool. Funding for public schools. I've asked the first draft of the so-called Higher Education Act was strewn about on the president's desk. Johnson glasses hung low on his nose, his hand at his forefront, the other gripping page 96 of the document. He hadn't been reading and editing and re reading for hours now. He, he had been. And he wasn't quite sure how long. This draft was what he had asked for all right, but it was going to be a darn nightmare to push through Congress. After the rigmarole of the conservatives threw, the president threw over the writing and passage of the ECA. It is indeed very likely that the HEA will receive sharp criticism from budget hawks in the Congress. Furthermore, directly aiding many colleges would possibly be viewed as favoritism. With party relations such as they are, committing to the funding plank could be very well caused irreparable damage. As such damage was significant enough, the president's own chances at re-election could be jeopardized. However, Johnson's staunch allies and supporters ins insist he commit to the university aid program in principle, arguing that the electoral drawback from doing so would be minimal at worst and non-existent at best. 
Johnson drew his red pen. I marked out a line on the paper. No, this won't do, he muttered to himself, scribbling on a correction in the margin. Then again, not everyone could be pleased, and an effort in trying to please everyone was an effort wasted. We've already done enough. No. No free society persisted with which did not champion free learning and knowledge. The 1968 National Progressive pr Primaries. Oh, boy. Um, okay, so if you wonder about this, this is about the NPP. Please go right ahead. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. The quiet woman from Maine is the quiet no more. Michael Harrington for the workers for the poor for Mike. Um, now, someone did recommend, in the, like, after we made the first episode here, that I need to do Margaret Chase Smith, which I will eventually. I don't know if you can get her 60-40. You might be able to get her in 64, but definitely 69, I guess, technically. So, um, let's, I want to go with Harrington, because I want to save Margaret Chase Smith for a full-on campaign eventually. So I think that would be really good to have. Or play as her, so. There we go. Nice. Keep spending that money. Oh, a little bit of reserves. Whoa! Because we improved property so much, we actually have a deficit. While we have quite high construction budget, that we're not really utilizing as well as we possibly could. As much as I, I hate having inefficiencies, and we should really cut down here, I'm going to have to save this political power. The but I mean, the economy is growing at a faster rate than the debt, so, and we're actually cutting down the deficit already, so... As much as I want to cut that down, I th it's just best to wait. It's just best to not spend the money. That's our programs. Yeah, conservative states. Um, let's see. What else we got around here? Nothing else. That's good. Oh, reports for duty. The Democratic or Republican Democratic primaries. The convention of the Republican Democratic parties reached its conclusion on live TV with LBJ giving a rousing speech to the assembled delegates in Chicago's International Amphitheater, calling for party unity, finishing what they have started, and going forth to bring the U.S. closer than ever to the shining city on the hill that the founding fathers claimed America would be. It wasn't a cakewalk for LBJ, as they faced a spirited resistance from Senator Barry Goldwater from Arizona and John Glenn, Governor of Ohio. Both Goldwater and Glenn sought to replace the current president, either by going to the right and appeal to the Democratic wing of the party in the case of Goldwater, or further to the left on the Republicans for Glenn. However, neither managed to get many delegates in the few primaries that were held for the RDs, and just as soon as they announced their candidates, or can candidacies, they were forgotten and left on the sidelines. But now, the president can focus on their eventual opponent in the NPP, and LBJ is secretly hoping that they can win a second term just as easily as he pushed out the AU h 20 and Glenn Rogers from the nomination. Four more years. <laughs> oh, funny, funny, funny. Funny to colleges, though. While elementary and secondary schools present much greater and resource-intensive programs or problems than higher education, and college education is nonetheless vital to more skilled professionals in the job market. Funds to public and private universities will receive the bulk of our attention, perhaps in exchange for practices to give opportunities to less advantaged applicants. Either way, higher education is indeed a federal assistance, and the cost of allowing higher education to deteriorate is much greater than the proposed federal funding. MLK Jr. has been assassinated. Um, I think I've, I think this happens every campaign. It kind of sucks, you know, that it gets assassinated, but if you'd like to read, that, read about that, please go right ahead. Oh, I don't want to have that happen, but yeah, if you want to read that, please go right ahead. This is out of control. That sucks. Especially for us, since we really try to help them out as much as possible in this campaign. So, expand the teacher's core. I'd love to, but we can't really do that right now. We can do this one. It won't piss off anybody too much. So, mm, 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 mm. 60s? No, 70s? Okay. We're running out of things to research. Um, attack helicopters. Naval doctrine doesn't mean, really mean anything here. I guess we'll go with, uh, global fleet distribution. And I guess we'll get that one. Silhouette stuff? Nice. Nice. Ah, the war on poverty is working out for us. Or the Great Society. This is not a war on poverty. That's just a Great Society stuff. Oh, you dingus says R and D's. Why can't you do well when you're trying to get people to vote for us? Great Lakes. Are the Higher Education Act? We'll probably be able to pass. Well, we might not be able to pass this. Interim funeral. If you like about that, please go right ahead. Um, but oh, the first president of the PBS. Oh crap, this is not going to be good. We might be able to do this. Before we do this, National Endowment for the Arts. Yeah, I'll probably be able to do this before uh, we the really whole election happens. So, for the Higher Education Act, another landmark piece of legislation in President Johnson's Great Society Initiative, the Higher Education Act, will make commitment to the enhancement of university education federal law implemented by a strengthened bureaucracy under the Act. Congress will provide greater funds to the nation's universities while encouraging scholarships and favorable loans to students with skills but not money for the colleges. Elementary school is important for general education, but greater funds towards higher education will improve its specialization. Now, we just saw on screen that, like, what was it, some part of Africa we gave its independence to? Someone was asking about that, why don't I invest in the mandates in Africa? That's because they are a massive resource drain, and we just don't have the political power for it. Like, it really sucks. 
that I would love to invest in those African mandates, but we just don't have the support for it. Because we need as much political power as, as you can see um, as possible. So, Alright. We're strong on education, which is good. The King riots in 1968. Cool. I gotta love the riots. Gotta love them. Uh, RDs, Republicans, Democrats, why do you both suck? You both suck. Why do you keep losing this? <laughs> why? Public college scholarships. This is a complaint of the HEA. It's an expansion of federally provided scholarships to distinguished students applying for college admittance. This part of the bill will be far less controversial and would more likely to engender more broad support across party lines, barring disagreement over the minutia of who is chosen to receive the scholarships, how they are administered, and how much the scholarships could be worth. The primary concern with this bill is the same as always. The financial burdens of the federal government grow with each year, and budgetary concerns must be considered when bringing all proposals to the table. Aside from the extremists basing, basing their arguments on racial logic, most opposition to the HEA is organizing around rhetoric arguing for financial considerations. The education debates being as fierce as they have been, it could ultimately be best to avoid such a commitment and to move on to the next item of the Great Society agenda. Uh, that's actually not bad if they grow stronger. Just because, I mean, we could probably, they'll probably support a lot of the stuff we do. Maybe. Hopefully. You never know. Um, god dang it. Republicans and Democrats, you both suck. Uh, the Great Plains. Not too bad. The Rockies. Oh, I think we do gotta do the Rockies again. Either the Rockies or West Coast. Let's do Rockies this time. Cool. And National Endowment for the Arts. We do get more political power that way, which is very good for us. Ooh, we get more political power for National Endowment of the Humanities. Let's do the arts first, though. Even though they have little use in the profit-minded American economy, the arts are nonetheless a staple of our society. To ensure that artists are valued and the crafts encouraged in the great society, President Johnson has proposed the creation of a new and independent agency of commissioned works of art. The so-called National Endowment for the Arts will provide critical funds to ambitious and visionary art projects across the U.S. and work with other government programs to achieve these ends. These operations will revive the nation on a deeper level than the economy. Pretty good. <clears throat> Debate with Michael Harrington. President LBJ and Papa Michael Harrington, who otherwise shared much in common on their prescription for the ills of American society, cut a sharp contrast from the moment they stepped on stage. A smile in Johnson towered over Michael Harrington as he vigorously manhandled Harrington's arm before the cameras. Harrington, to his discredit, refused to budge or flinch, a quiet force radiating against J Johnson's energetic presence. The roles reversed as the debates kicked off, with Harrington launching into a surprise criticism of Johnson's administration. President Johnson, your great society suffers from a lack of ambition. The root causes of grinding poverty, of an unemployment, of the debasement of human dignity remained unaddressed. We both agree on the role of government in fundamentally bettering American lives, yet you focus on treating symptoms while ignoring the cure that millions hope to receive. Well, Mr. Harrington, you certainly don't lack for conviction, Pr President Johnson replied, but when you speak of dreams, I deliver results. Ask any American on the street, are they safer, healthier, more satisfied with their lives? We both agree that politics is about people, but results matter as much if not more than, ideas in politics. And I can promise you, if you believe that the Great Society isn't ambitious enough, you ain't seen nothing yet. Johnson Harrington? Oh, we gotta go with Jumbo. Jumbo. Jumbo means means well. And he knows what he's doing. Harrington is nice and all, but... <clears throat> Lyndon Jumbo. <laughs> what is it? LB Jumbo. <laughs> the party's fracturing, Mr. President. I have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news is that we pushed some more of the Great Society through, and the bills are ready for your signature to make them law the lamb. This, of course, will be a great success for the administration and may any, help many Americans that need it at most. The bad news, however, is that the Republican-Democratic coalition is starting to break. Many of the right-leaning Democrats are openly starting to back away from you and the party, denouncing our efforts as centralizing the government and Bukharanism. Some congressmen are even crossing the aisle of the MPP. While most of them didn't like the Great Society in general, they're leaving deals a blow to make your policy seem, at least on the surface, somewhat bipartisan. On top of that, now the Republicans are starting to warm on the whole to the Great Society, but are starting to push us to go even further, make the plans more ambitious. They really are starting to sound like Harrington or Henry Jackson. Hey, now, don't throw that pen at me. I know you don't like Henry Jackson, but take it up with the Republicans. I'm just telling you what I've heard. I ain't no NPP. More exhausted with our agenda? Nonsense! And National Endowment uh, of the Humanities. While the visual arts are important to maintaining a healthy society, we must also focus on our history, philosophy, and scholarship. God dang the Republicans and Democrats. The National Endowment for the Humanities will seek to fill this niche. While allocating funds to a range of humanities projects undertaken by libraries, museums, and other public institutions. Since humanity is such a broad term, the organization will receive substantial but reasonable funding to advance the humanities in the U.S. and its culture. I guess Germany's going to go to war with Bulgaria. Good luck. Good luck. God, the R&Ds, I mean, just pathetic. I mean, just come on, man. Like, we're doing the best we can. Three in a row. You guys sucked it up. Like, my goodness. Hmm. 
as you can tell, I'm disappointed with the R's and D's. Uh, infantry anti-air, and that's fine to do. All right. Uh, we're running out of, like, stuff we can do here. I mean, this stuff, I never use IFBs. I'll uh, go and do that. It's 84 days. That's, that's not too bad. Nope. And we can vote. What's the point of even doing this? Like, they're just going to lose anyway, so what's the point? We're just going to lose more voters. Oh, yeah. Can we get... Oh, no, that definitely went back up. Gosh darn it. That's okay. Whatever. And slightly more political power now. Nice. Actually, you know what? I want to do that. Do we have anything down here? That would... Oh, we're very strong on education, which I do like. Uh, welfare is middling. Anything here that will not hurt our support in the conservative areas? Ooh, conservative. We could actually probably get the increased Medicare payments. That would not be bad. Uh, conservatives, conservatives... Uh, that might... Oh, sanction ocean dumping might... Actually, that pissed off the conservatives because the south is pretty much all along the coast. Uh, environmentalists will like that. That's nice and all. We actually might save up for increased Medicare payments then. I'm kind of okay with that. And the first broadcast of the PBS. Oh boy. Oh god, the elections are coming up. At Folsom Prison, if you'd like to read about that, please go ahead. <clears throat> the Public Broadcasting Service is the first non-profit, publicly funded TV broadcast service. It's a major part of President Johnson's Great Society project. The newly formed PBS will act as a distributor, with various channels under its purview co covering topics ranging from children's entertainment to the news. The goal is to organize will be to provide accessible and high-quality programming to all Americans, and hopefully educate the nation's citizens in the process. As long as they don't favor any s either side, any side, either side, any side, and give us the facts. The warning. Oh, okay. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Oh, God. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, no. Please. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. The results? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, we lost some seats. Some people defended their seats. Okay, we lost four. That's not bad. The Republicans, the Democrats lost six. That's not too bad. Okay, that's not too bad, actually. Oh, this is good as, good as well. Four? You know, we can work with four. So, how did the thing happen? So, we have 45. We saw 45 Republicans, and the Democrats don't like us. God dang it. The Senate didn't get anybody, though. God dang it. Ah. Election Day 1968. More than a year of announcements, debates, speeches, and rallies have come to an end on November 5th, 1968. With Election Day, millions of Americans have lined up at school gymnasiums, libraries, civic civil centers, and fire stations across the nation to fulfill their civic and democratic duty. This year marks the 46th quadrennial presidential election, but there will also be 21 state guberna gubernatorial elections to decide state governors, 34 Senate seats and all 435 seats in the House of Representatives, and many other local and state elections for mayor, counselors, sheriffs, and judges all across the nation. However, the presidential election is what everyone is tuning into TV and radio to learn about the polls, which are closed. As the night goes on and the votes are counted and reported, it soon becomes clear who will be sitting in the White House for the next four years. President LBJ, four more years. we got four more years with 45 Republicans, and we're probably only going to go down from here on out. As long as we can get five Democrats, or six Democrats, as well as maybe a few from the NPs, far-right MPP, we'll do okay. We have done great, even though the center has been just absolutely butt-blasted. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll also say it. Now we can do whatever legislation we want, right? Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But that really sucks that, uh... The Senate didn't even get a single vote. They're too much like Republicans, apparently. Operation success. We got 40 more political power. Great! And I, I say this about a lot of campaigns, but I'm, I'm enjoying this campaign. I'm loving the, the kind of the struggle. Trying to improve society so much. I love it. So much fun. Uh, let's see. Anything here? You know what? We'll probably go with this one. Food stamps. Increased funding to CMS. Um, a moment to reflect, of course. Anything else here that we really care about? Not really too much. Anything up there? We could probably close this one out, so. <clears throat> the Republican Party defended their seat Republican Party. Is the Republican Party trying to sabotage itself? I would not be surprised. Hmm. You know what? I don't think I want to spend 150 political power right now, but we're doing so well that I think we will. Let's increase Medicare payments. Nice. Oh, and look at that. Middling on healthcare, too? We're doing quite well, I'd say. But I think we must continue on and revisit, revisit, revisit the WMD bill. In 1945, Senators Wagner, Murrah, and Dingell proposed legislation to Congress to reform the nation's health care system. They introduced the WMD, which have instituted a national hospitalization program accessible to all Americans. Unfortunately, in those times of strife, such radical change was swift, swiftly struck down before it could pass. Now, it seems uh, that the bill's time has come. Through a renewal and revision of the WMD bill, we could soon implement its most beneficial qualities. The goal will be then become the creation of a national system aided by the government directly. Aid for recognition. After the opening of formal communication channels between the U.S. and Irkutsk, you go to request that we formally recognize Irkutsk as a sovereign state and that they had sent emissaries to Washington, D.C. to further discuss diplomatic relations between us and them. Irkutsk seems to be 
to appear the most legitimate successor state of the former Soviet Union. With the government continuing many former policies and being run by many high-ranking former Soviet government members, although they do not ask for formal recognition as USSR's successor state, the continuity they possess with the old Soviet government makes it an ideal candidate for support from us and makes them a likely candidate for Soviet reunification and for a potentially powerful ally which can properly face the fascist menace in Europe. I know what ally returns, we do get political power. Um, the West Revolutionary Front is here though still. They can still be pretty darn good. It is Tukhachevsky. They still have to fight these guys though. Oh, applying for funding. Oh, they don't have that much manpower. Two or three divisions. Two or three divisions. They are, oh, it's anyone's game. I swear. Ah, oh, screw it, we'll do it, why not? We'll do it, why not? A public broadcasting service. Daniel had never been so excited. As TV operations go, this one would be relatively standard. The only difference between it and all the work he had done for the Washington News broadcasters was that this would be nationwide. President Johnson had approved the public broadcasting service only a few months ago. A coalition of small broadcasting networks had gotten together, and here he stood, ready for the first broadcast of PBS. There would be words from the new president of the service, Hartford Gunn. <clears throat> he stood opposite Daniel, who operated a camera. Gunn shuffled some papers on the desk and straightened his tie. There was only one minute until the first broadcast. Daniel could feel his heart pounding as the clock slowly ticked down. Daniel raised his arm live in five, four, three, two... The screen show showing the broadcast became consumed with the service's logo, PBS, came a disembodied voice from the screen, Be More. A victory for education. Wow, that's actually really awesome. We got 100 political power. The Arties look a little bit better and more academic based. Now that is really, really good. But we also have a dream more than dreamt. We put so much effort into passing the reforms that led to President Johnson's great society and we we're finally starting to reap the fruits of our labor. At the end of the day, our carefully planned policies and our wonderful campaigns have given us a competitive voter base in even the most conservative regions of the nation. We owe it all to the brave activists that preached our party to the masses of African Americans across the South. We owe it all to President Johnson's government who worked tirelessly to pass legislation that would benefit all Americans regardless of race. Even now, our work is far from over. Racism is still a widespread issue and prejudice against Republicans continues. As it has since the start of Reconstruction. More white voters have deserted the party. During this campaign, in fact, we've almost lost every Dixiecrat member to the MPP. Even with the Republican unity among African Americans, division between blacks and whites is even more apparent. Regardless, President Johnson's great society has improved, Afri uh, improved American health care, education, civil rights, and many other important parts of the daily life. There's no doubt that the Republican Party will continue gaining lifeline or lifetime supporters as a result of LBJ's successes. Our activists, now working as full-fledged members of the Republican Party, will continue promoting the party that has already helped so many Americans through Johnson's plan. The future is bright for the revitalized of Republicans. Our support in the ma African American community will massively increase. From this point on, African Americans will states will enthusiastically support our reforms. Cool. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. And I think we already read about this, so... Yes, we'll help, uh, actually we'll lose political power from this, which really does suck, but it is what it is, my friends. It is what it is. Alright, and of course, CIA stuff. But we're very strong in civil rights, very strong in education, middling on healthcare and, and uh, healthcare and welfare, and we're very weak on the environment. But we have some time and quite a bit of PP, which you do might want to keep here. But let's see, anything for uh, poverty? I really want to get rid of poverty. Then again, you're always gonna have a level of poverty no matter what. But I think the only thing we have here is increased funding to CMS. Yes, and that's healthcare stuff. So, um, environment. Yeah, well, I think we might focus on the environment last, maybe. Just because I think the other stuff might be a little bit more important, but request funding from Siberia. The government of Irkutsk has sent a request to the OFN headquarters this morning regarding the sending of funds to support their army. They say they need the money to expand their forces and secure the surrounding area under an OFN friendly banner. Although the country is small and successful, Irkutsk unification of eastern Siberia and the regions beyond will place large regions of Eurasia in the hands of a friend, regime friendly to the OFM. If they are to eventually even, even to reunify Russia, it will give us a valuable ally against fascism as well. Send the funds. $30 million is nothing. We spend way more money on education and, uh, you know, social programs. $30 million is like whatever. Just make, basically, you know, if we have to deficit spend and make the next generation pay for it, that's okay. Academic base. Um, head start. School system. Education. Um, it's already very strong. I mean, I don't want to do it when it's already so strong. But, you know what, food stamps. That's welfare. Now we're strong on that. Ooh, pressure for food banks in all states. We have the PP for it, you know what? This, pro The less progressive states may feel this is federal overreach. You probably know it is, but poverty gets better. We're strong on welfare right now. Yeah, nice. Up next, reintroduce the idea of social security. Incentivize insurance companies? Yes. 
We are making great progress in our campaign to institute a national healthcare system, but in order to fully implement such a system, we will have to enlist the support of very, the very insurance companies who have caused the problems we seek to address. To do this, we will provide financial incentives to these corporations in the form of subsidies to secure their assistance. As we write more legislation, while their practices, practices are unsavory, we will need their cooperation if we hope to right their wrongs. We have a lot of uh, air XP, wow. Okay, so artillery is done. It is 69. Happy 1969, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. And I think LBJ is right. We need battleships. <laughs> Just because we can. Oh, a little bit of lag. Oh, it's lagging really hard. Cool. Nice. We can increase R&D unity, but as you guys said, who cares about the Democrats for now? Oh, there goes Scotland. Goodbye, Scotland. They're at war. Pretty normal. Oh, and do we have any of this? I love that America's ideology is just splitting. Oh, look at reserves. Cool. I mean, like I said earlier, we don't really need to focus on that too much. It's, it's okay for now. Harold Wilson's been reelected. And we'll probably... Oh, a job half done. As LBJ recited the same oath of office he had taken four years prior, the feeling going through his mind could only be described as satisfaction. He had done a gosh darn fine job, all things considered. His great society has proven a hit. The Republican Democrats were back in top form, and the NPP was still irrelevant as ever. It had not been an easy task to recover from the colossal screw-ups of the last administrations, but he had come out swinging. As he stood before the crowd, however, he knew that now was the time for attack, not boorishness, and so he put aside his usual bravado for the time being. Unity is the first and foremost principle of our American Union. For we who are small and few against the forces of their tyranny, our continued liberty must derive from commonality and the strength of our collective will to endure. Yet, true unity cannot be derived from a nation at odds with itself. It is this that I believe is what a great society must truly strive for and what we have endeavored to strive for these past few years. No longer need capitalist and worker, nor farmer and clerk struggle against one another. For we may now stand shoulder to shoulder in the interest of increasing the bounty of all. From the many great tragedies of the last few decades, the spirit of one great indivisible nation stands unblemished. It is my hope that this spirit may never be exhausted or extinguished. And it is my earnest wish to continue to protect and nurture the spirit. We are a nation of liberty and justice, blessed by God, and it is our duty to struggle with toil and tears to ensure that the light of our nation shines on, on my part. I promise to you now what I promised to the men of my party on that sorrowful day in 1963. I will lead and I will do the best I can. Once more, the crowd roared with appreciation. President Johnson was not a sentimental man, but even he felt a stirrings of pride in his heart. Once more, he had a duty to these people, and it was this solemn oath to fulfill that duty. Four more years lay in front of him, and there was still a lot of work to do. Through the efforts of the great society and the efforts of the American people, America was sure to emerge ever greater, and even more united against all that would seek to tear it down from both within and without, for an ever more perfect union. Look at that. Yaki is 2%, and so does uh, Gus Hall. Very cool. God, we have so much people. Second inauguration of Jumbo? Ha, uh, all the way with LBJ. Alright, so, you know what, maybe we'll give some token environmental protections. We'll go with a big one here. Fun cleanups? Now it's weak, and I'm okay with weak. Just to show people that we are working on environmental protections for now. Blue Cross Blue Shields, improved healthcare. We lose even more political power and lose consumer goods, which actually I'm kind of okay with right now. Move, remove, or reduce supports among conservatives stuff. That's fine. Um, let's see. We can we can secure majority votes in Congress. It looks like rein in the AMA. Oh boy, workplace healthcare act, private healthcare with public healthcare. That's actually not bad. I kind of want to kind of beeline for that one, and reassure the public. We'll do maybe social security last, perhaps. God, I hope we have enough votes for this. I hope to God we got enough votes. But we're going to keep going. Blue Cross Blue Shield. Covering millions of citizens is a lofty undertaking that we can never manage on our own. To remedy the situation, we must draw from the existing insurance market to handle these issues. The Blue Cross Blue Shield Association is a fantastic candidate for the implementation of Medicare, Medicaid, and other nationwide insurance programs as proposed by Johnson's Great Society. Existing as an association of various insurance companies across the country, the organization will be vital to our plans going forward. And there was another comment off screen that I did check. Someone did say, are we going to try to maximize the Great Society plan? Well, we'll do the best we possibly can right now. I mean, there's no guarantee for anything here. But we get 1.29 political power every single day, so we've set ourselves up to do quite a nice job so far. And let's go and hurt the image of the far right, because <laughs> we're going to need to. We're literally using the CIA to hurt our political opponents, and that's okay, right? As long as we don't get caught. Academic base, it's already very strong here. Welfare is nice. And... You know what, this is 10 political power, we can do that one. We only have one Earth. We need to help and make sure the Earth is nice and stable. Cool, cool. 
Oh, you know what? We already have 25 pixel power. Do that once. That costs, oh my, 6 billion, roughly 6 billion was cut down. That's so nice. But amend the Hill Burton Act. The Hill Burton was a landmark piece of legislation for healthcare reform in the U.S., passed in 46. The Act gives significant loans to hospitals, who then promises to provide services to customers who cannot afford payment, even with included insurance. The Act has success, been successful, and not only caring for those who cannot easily care for themselves, but also improving the services they receive now. Two decades later, we can revisit the bill. Through the addition of modifications that will further improve the healthcare situation, we can move one step closer to universal coverage. Beach Boys found murdered. Oh no, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Improve the state of healthcare? You bet it will. Healthcare for the people, my friends. Intelligence analysis. I guess we can hurt the image of the center. It's either Republicans or that's it. No center, nothing like that. But we're strong in healthcare, strong in welfare. We're weak on the environment. We're doing great. I love it. Until we have a crisis, probably. Oh, I'm tempted. Oh, that's so nice. Less than a billion in deficit. Oh. Oh, the West Siberian Provisional Authority reaches up. It was the CIA who pressured the foreign ministry into accepting the obscure West Siberian Provisional Authority's abrupt offer to invite American diplomats to a conference in the capital city of Omsk. Foreign affairs initially deemed it to be too dangerous, especially considering that up until now, Omsk and its surrounding territory has been an informational black hole. This, more than anything, is what the CIA to pressure us to attend. A few CIA agents, disguised as bodyguards, attended the conference with the curious diplomats last week and reported that the situation in Omsk appears surprisingly normal. The government has clearly done hasty work to beautify the city's center and refurbish an old hotel for diplomatic use, but such as a thing was hardly out of the ordinary when American officials visited developing nations. Truthfully, most were impressed at how well the local government had patched over the cracks of war and decay and found it to be an excellent sign of the government's effectiveness. The only dissenting opinion of this rather pleasant and mis assessment was from an older agent who insisted there was something off about the people's smiles, something dead and rotten in their eyes. Regardless of this paranoia, the conference went rather well, with diplomats being well fed with local cuisine and well watered with vodka. They were even given the honor of meeting the ever busy Dmitry Yazov, who the diplomats found to be a very impressive figure. They assured us that while he wasn't democratically elected, he seems to be a developmental authoritarian, using his unchecked as executive power to turn a backwaters or backwards region around for the better before transitioning to a democracy. The West Siberian request was hardly unexpected. They merely wished for the OFN recognition of the government as a sovereign state. We have to ex we have hardly have any reason not to accept. Give them the recognition, but warn warn America's warn Americans that the region is still a war zone. No, I trust the agents got there's something uh, black brewing the city of Omsk. Uh, we're gonna support those guys, so let's go with those guys for now. Sorry, Omsk, not this time. Maybe next time. So we did this once, I think we're good enough here for now. I doubt we can build any more civvies, can we? Yeah, we can't build any more civvies, which sucks, but it is what it is. Actually, from here on out, we're going to do 1970 stuff because we might as well. Whatever. Japan. Okay, Japan recognized them. Okay, well, it makes sense that they would. Instead of us, Slaughterhouse 5. And so it goes. Um, if, what is this? I think this happens every campaign. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. It is what it is. Yeah, I read that one quite a few times already. But rain in the AMA. <clears throat> if we can do that, right? Good. The American Medical Association is the largest association of physicians in the U.S., including tens of thousands of doctors from across the country. Its stated goal is the betterment of public health, and it plays a critical role in physician specialization in the medical system. The organization also holds significant political clout, often partaking in cop copious lobbying for the interests that are often against our stated goals. With this in mind, we must recognize the importance of gaining their support before we pass any more legislation. Whether through favors, grants, or possibly threats, we will bring the AMA into the fold. Good, good, good. All right, what else can we do here? Um, head start. I mean, academic base is super important to do. Um, uh, do the one that's more expensive. You know what? We'll do both. Why not? We'll do both. Because we can. All right, this point, I want to focus on more civvies, so. 239 days is a long, long time, but whatever. And we want to keep at least 100 political power from here on out, because we're going to lose more political power. Additionally, we may need to get more support from other senators, so we, we got to keep quite a bit. But the Workplace uh, Healthcare Act. The Workplace Healthcare Act is the next step in a gradual march towards a robust and federally supported insurance system, serving as a check on the often harmful and abusive policies of insurance companies. The Act proposes a number of protections for the nation's consumers. These include the obligation for price transparency and invisibility to prevent exploitation and requirement that all companies provide insurance regardless of pre-existing disabilities, sex, or any other conceivable factors. For years, corporations tasked with providing insurance have used their privileged positions to profit off of the struggles of unwitting customers. This newly proposed Act will prevent such practices. Good, we get more political power with this one, which is extremely important. Uh, get more cost, but whatever. Poverty will go up and po poverty monthly change will go up. Awesome. Voters in the South and Rockies will disapprove. Broken air that some of the law fears. Um, if you like about this one, this is a, one about Iceland so ordered. This is not good against us in Germany because Goring is probably very aggressive. Actually, is Goring alive? No, Goring's dead. He's dead. So, because you can see Switzerland's here, so. 
<sighs> so. Pride and Goring? Well, Goring is gone, which is disappointing. He couldn't do whatever he wanted to do. I wonder what he tried to do last. Oh, God. Oh, the f oh over here is all such a mess. Wow. I guess Ansu did want to go to war with these guys already. And they didn't get involved. Tukacheski did not get involved in the Urals. Holy crud. Um, also, I guess for now, just in case for this thing, I'm going to save just in case. Just because if I have to reset this, I don't want it to go back to where we you know, left off earlier. So, we, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. Let him pass. No, no, no. Tell the Germans to back off. Oh, you betcha. Anything else? I mean, Africa's looking actually not that bad. It's really not looking that bad until South Africa explodes again. The Germans fall. Great. Okay. We grow more unified. Awesome, 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 awesome. The day after the election. The two men shook hands as it entered the Oval Office. Congratulations on your re-election, Mr. President, the first man said. The pleasure is all mine, the President re-elect Lyndon B. Johnson said. Well, wasn't to be pleased about. The economy was going up, race riots were becoming a thing of the past until later, and America's largest moved on from Watergate and South Africa. Everything was going fine and steady except, Mr. Secretary, began the President, as he occupied the Resolute Desk. What can you tell me about the ports? The Secretary stayed bolted from his seat, sending it scrapping across the floor. He turned back to the entrance, saying, I'll notify JCS immediately. Don't. What do I look like? A riotous nut job? President Johnson chuckled, gesturing to the Secretary's chair. I'm not going to escalate, if that's what you thought. I've got something bigger in mind. Eyes widen and dawning realization. You mean a nod. I want a report on my desk by tomorrow morning. L likelihoods, risk assessments, angles of approach, everything you think I need to know. We'll discuss this in detail with the rest of the cabinet right away. And with that, the handover was in motion. The treaty port negotiation... Oh, crap. That is... Oh, that is not good. Um, Anything else here? We have 152. We can spend a little bit. 50. You know what? Combat water pollution? No, let's let's sanction op ocean dumping, because that'll hurt our image among others first. But it's middling. Environment's middling. The hidden arms. Very nice. Good. Good. Awesome. Oh, the treaty port negotiations. All right, let's see. Makes let's make history. Unlock new decisions category for the Honolulu Accords. This, there's a political power pool that gains or losses depending on the, how much we invest. Oh, this is why we need to keep some political power. Cool. So the assembled cabinet was silent, di digesting the contents of the proposal before them. President Johnson surveyed the room, knowing the enormity of the moment was giving everybody pause. It's been 20 years since the end of the war, gentlemen. President Johnson said, a decade or so ago, since Eisenhower tore up the Kagi Accords and admitted Hawaii into the Union. Now it's our turn to finish what he started. The proposal, to stand up to jo Japan at last and to demand negotiations over the treaty ports of San Francisco and L.A., would be the most ambitious and consequential diplomatic initiative by the U.S. in their lifetimes. The eyes of the world and of the American electorate would be scrutinizing them under a microscope. There would be no room for failure. The Japanese wouldn't simply fold. But it was clear that holding ports halfway across the world, a diplomatic nightmare and impossible to secure, was increasingly unattractive. How much could American push without being pushed aside by Japan in her turn. It would take the political power of the American government to ensure that the successful return of the ports, without giving away the house to the Japanese in the process, but a few concessions here and there might be useful in making demands further down the line. Let's make history. And just in case, I'm going to go ahead and pressure the states. Predictably, many states have opposed the passage of further legislation in Congress and have been reluctant to participate in the implementation of her programs. Admittedly, the effects on state-level budgets has been stressful, but with sufficient reorganization, they should be manageable. To encourage the participation in our newly constructed system, we will have to pressure them into cooperation. The ways this could manifest are ex extensive, but ne negative and positive reinforcement are both on the table. By giving benefits to states who adopt our programs and threatening to revoke critical funds in other areas who... To those who do not, we can keep the states in line. And just in case, just in case again, I'm going to save because I you often have to save to make sure you get things done that you really, really want. So this is why we need some political power as well. So we're going to forget about this stuff for now. And actually, can we get some more political power actually by investing? Yes, yes, we can. I'm glad I checked. That's actually really good. Come back to America, and we might be able to do some more things. Um, where is the stuff about a great society? Oh, here, the Honolulu Accords. All right, let's begin this. We're going to invest as much political power as we possibly can. Invest in negative 25 political power. The Japanese propose a summit location. The Japanese are proposing in Mexico City as a neutral ground. President LBJ sounded slightly surprised. Never thought the Japanese would re be reasonable about any of this business, but here we are. The Secretary of State nodded. We've got an embassy there, and we can set up a secure line to ensure direct contact with Washington is needed. Of course, the Japanese get all the benefits as well. President Johnson chewed on a pencil, thinking the offer over. You know, if the Japanese are being reasonable, it might not be a bad time to push for going to one of our carriers. I'm sure the voters would love it. Optics, go for a carrier. We'll take the Japanese offer. Um, we'll lose political power. We're going to invest more. Go for a carrier. Usually we don't go for a carrier, but improve academic base. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. We're currently in the lead. Nice. They propose a summit location. Uh, we literally did this once. This might be bugged. 
Wait, we'll take the... Wait, what? We took the Japanese offer. Losing some of our... Uh, what? Okay. Well, that's very weird. Okay, then. Actually, how far are we... How close are we getting? War in Russia. Oh, look, we gotta read about that one, too. Uh, seeing anything else. Agriculture, we haven't helped out at all, which is kind of weird, but okay. I guess agriculture is not part of a great society, then. <clears throat> War in Russia, though. President LBJ sat at the Resolute Desk look looking over the maps and files that the CIA had produced to illustrate the current situation in what was once the Soviet Union. As you can see, Mr. President, the situation is rapidly changing, the CIA director said. Most of the warlords of the area have been defeated and consolidation is proceeding rapidly. Just a few days ago, the western half of the old Russia erupted into war, trying to unify the whole area to prepare to take over all of Russia. The president leaned forward. And what are you proposing? We're still evaluating what options are available, depending on what side we think would be the most aligned with us, and which would be the strongest to balance out our enemies in Eurasia. The CIA director said we still will have some proposals within the next week. The president drummed his fingers on the desk as he looked at the maps. And with the rough dotted lines of where the old warlords had once been, the path of broken ideologies, and the armies that had failed in their goal to unify Russia. Finally, the CIA director raised his voice and asked, Mr. President, if I may, who do you think we should back? Our friends in the West Siberian Provisional Authority, of course. Did we already recognize the Yugoda government? I'm pretty sure we did that already. So, we're going to pressure the states. Oh, consolidate previous costs, reducing them by 50%. Lose, lose political power, which is not good. The less progressive states may view this as federal overreach. Oh, they definitely do. The summit is set. The Japanese just sent over their agreement on location. We're going to go for the summit. <clears throat> a momentary look of relief emerged on the Secretary of State's face before swiftly disappearing. Now comes the hard part, President LBJ said. We better get ready for what the Japanese are going to want in exchange for giving our territory back. They want our oil, and we want access to our market. The Secretary of State slid a fold over the President's desk. With everything that's been going on in the sphere, I can't say I blame him. President Johnson smiled, and that gives us leverage. Making history one step at a time. God dang it, the deficit's looking worse now. Japanese demand oil. <clears throat> um, I mean, realistically, if you want to read about this one, please go ahead. This happens pretty much every time you play as either like RFK or any, what, president in the mid-60s or late-60s. So, that's exactly, I think it's exactly the same thing, so. And the goal is to give him as much oil as possible, so. Oh, actually. Um, give him a minimum out of oil. Uh, why do we get political power this way? We make the we. That doesn't make any sense. Give them as much oil as possible. We want to give them as much oil as possible, don't we? Why are they in the lead then? The Democrats are leaving. Okay, so Mr. President, things are not looking good. Well, okay, they are looking good for the great society, and I know that this is the most important thing right now. Yes, there's another bill for you to sign, and yes, we're still getting the laws through Congress. Even the poll numbers are still in the positive, but those numbers are just barely above the majority, and we're facing an internal political maelstrom. The Republican Democrat Party is crumbling as we speak already. Several big name Democrats have announced us and are crossing over to the far right MPP. This is really not good. If the RDs break up, then the Republican Party is that is left will never win another election. You must understand, sir, that politics is my thing. I'm here to tell you that what is and what isn't good for your political standing. I know the great society is great for America, and I'll do whatever I can to get it passed, but with the party buckling, and the sides getting more partisan and restless, I don't know how much more I can do within the party. We're going to have to rely on the progressives of the Republican Party and the NPP Center to keep passing great society legislation, which should be enough to get it through Congress, but I really don't know how much further we can push this, and what will happen to American politics if we go much further. Dems be darned, and we'll get this done. That doesn't make any sense. We gave them as much oil, which makes sense to do this. So why do we lose political power? Or why do we... They're currently in the lead? Why? That doesn't make any sense. That might be bugged as well. Japanese want more? Um, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Terminate the trade deal? Um, no, accept their demands? Yeah. Yeah, we want to accept their new demands. Bargain for the original offer. Eh, we'll do that one. Why not? The current political power in the polls minus 25, a complete success. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. The negotiations worked. Good. That's good so far. That's good to have. And then... In terms of a deal. Alright, so we got to read this one. The Japanese delegation has put forth their proposal for the resumption of the trade between our economies. Well, the terms they set to forth to end the embargo seemed fairly agreeable. They decided to tie the issue to that of the treaty ports. They demand we pay a hefty sum of money for the return of the ports, and have made a deal on the transfer of a condition for the resumption of trade. While well, placing this condition on what could have been a straightforward subject to resolve has outraged most of our delegation, with many calling for an immediate end to the negotiations, cooler heads point out that the access to the vast Asian markets is a prize well worth the cost. At the very least, we should attempt to separate the issues and offer a condition-free resumption of trade. Which should be our response. Are we supposed to get this? This is like the logo of the MPP. We'll pay for the parts that makes them happy. Trade will resume without conditions or not at all. Mm. I'm going to lose the political power for this one because it says Japan's currently in the lead. 
Civil War in Yemen, cool. Come on. Third Clause. All right, let's see. It looks like this one happens pretty much every single time. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. Small price for ports. Free ports and demilitarized islands will secure islands. Japanese must demilitarize Hawaii before we receive our ports. Let's do that one. I don't mind spending as much PP if, if, as much as possible. That's totally fine with me. Come on, Japan. Voyage, last voyage of the SS United States. Oh. Uh, I think this one happens every campaign as well. If you like to about that, please go right ahead. They haven't invested 75 political power. The Japanese response. Oh, boy. Um, I don't think I've read this one before. So our request for demilitarization of Hawaii has apparently not been well received in the Japanese camp. Finally, refusing to consider the merits of our proposal. They say that, that port transfer is the only issue up for discussion. Demilitarization is only part of these talks as a condition for port transfer. They say and must insist equally firmly on this condition and the complete impossibility of re reciprocation. The Hawaiian Missile Crisis, they remind us, was caused by American recalcitrance and our internal failures driving foreign policy decisions and the onus is entirely on the USA to prevent a repeat of the past event. Many in our administration point out that this arrogance is typical of the Japanese in their dealings with us. Discussions are completed on the clauses that matter to the Japanese, so that they reverted to the attitude of victorious conquerors, dictating demands to the vanquished foe. If we accept their diktats, they say we'll set up, uh, set up for them to continue their arrogant disregard for interests in our future dealings as well. On the other hand, the success of the summit hinges on us finding some way to accommodate both nations here, and we might need to give them this to prevent the negotiations from unraveling entirely. However, we reply, there will be no room for further negotiations on the issue, how should we say? We insist on a civil Hawaii. Oh, they'll probably say no then. We're still in the lead. Stonewall boss, if you like to buy that, please go right ahead. And as well as this one too. Thank God they caught him. We're currently in the lead. Oh, spend more money to get more political power. Doesn't matter what happens. We shall overcome. If you like to buy that, please go right ahead. Fire to the fuel. Instruction in Oman. And kick lands in tear gas. There you go. Oh, pressure the states. That's good. Incredible sight. We're currently in the lead. Come on, Japan. What are you going to do? We're gonna pull. They're probably going to pull out. All right, so in the meantime, let's go and do this. So we're pretty much done. All we can do is either this stuff down here or this stuff, which 1964 military outlook. No thanks. We reintroduce the idea of social security. There are currently no existing programs that provide assistance to the retirees who no longer have the dexterity to care for themselves. The idea for such a system, called Social Security by its proponents, had been floated as early as the 1930s. However, due to a lack of wealth from politicians, the idea never gained traction necessary for widespread recognition. President Johnson, as part of a larger welfare plan, aims to bring Social Security to the forefront as a major aspect of his policy. The proposed program will draw from existing tax revenue that can be dis then distributed to retired Americans, hopefully creating a sustainable system to ease retirement. Because that's literally the only one we can do left for uh, welfare and such. So, All right... Since, especially since we have no senators, 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 senator, 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 senators. Come on. Is this going to bug out? What's going to happen? Come on. Come on, Japan. Is this bugged? It might be bugged. I don't know. Oh, okay, no. Round two. Okay, so not after, not days after the riot of celebrations in L.A. and San Francisco, the foreign minister returned to Washington, D.C. under President Johnson's personal invitation. The fi visit's official intent was a tour around the American capital, a show of goodwill capitalizing on the momentum of the now-named handover success. Unofficially well, the old man had his suspicions. He thought them confirmed when he entered the Oval Office and saw the president, back turned, inspecting a large canvas map of Hawaii. The minister drew in a sharp breath as he took a seat, stealing himself for the last conversation he ever wished to confront in his career. I trust the accommodations here are to your liking, the president Johnson asked, without glancing back. The foreign minister grunted an assent. Not exactly proper decorum, but he figured that silence meant the president didn't care. Good. Leather shoes clacked with polished linoleum. As the president shuffled back to the resolute desk, pulling several folders out of his cabinet, he spread the stack across the surface like a dealer with a stack of cards. Each folder, folder bore proposal and read capital letters across their tab. We don't want to keep you from seeing the site, so I'll keep this brief. We've got some ideas for your government's consideration. We'll discuss these more later during your stay. As quickly as he had arrived, the minister left the office, escorted by his assigned guard, or guide. When he eventually inspected the president's ideas and pre print form, he was drawn to the most to... Measure negotiations over Hawaii's re-entry into the Union. Exchange for the Panama Canal Zone for Hawaii. Unconditional retrocession of the Hawaiian Islands of, to its rightful government. Yeah, we're going to do that one. I like to go big and bold. Jumbo likes to go big and bold, everyone. Hopefully they say yes. They might not say no. They might say no. Oh, they invested 25. We're still currently the lead. Oh. Regarding DMZ violations. Um, if you want to read about this one, please go ahead. Approved disciplinary measures for violating the agreement. Failed to reach... No. 
We lose political power, though. Wall approved disciplinary measures for violating the agreement. That's good. Free civvies? You can't build anything else. Good. God dang it. My goodness. We could... Oh, we can build a synthetic refinery there. That's fine with me. Naval dockyards? I guess if you really want that, we can build them down there. Fuel silos? That sucks that we can't really build too much here. We just have random forts all over the country. Just like... I don't know. It's just so weird. Every state should have at least one fort, I guess. So, it is what it is. Come on, Japan. Give up. Give up the forts. The ha the handshake. Okay. A class from a firm hand? We begin... Regret uh, class the hand firm? Alright, if you like about that, please go ahead. An ocean... We actually got the ports back on the first try. Literally, on the first try. Holy crud. That is awesome. Actually, I'm not sure we're putting ocean pacified. Peace and Wow. Wow, okay. The o Pacific Ocean was hardly p Pacific even before the Second World War. Great powers had passed, had offered at least a stick of kindling to the hearth fires below the large cauldron, stoking its waters to an even simmer. Not too hot that its riches cannot be plumbed, or too mild that all may freely sate their greed with them. This delicate, almost gentlemanly balance was shattered when the world bared witness to the boiling seas and sunsets stronger than the daylight sun. As mushroom clouds ended one age and announced the next, many feared the Pacific would forever stay between Twilight and Armageddon, keeping in place by two ambitious ambitions greater than the expanse which they both contest. Such fears were laid to rest today by a pair of disheveled, disheveled ambassadors, all but bracing each other's enervated weights as they hobbled out of a hotel lobby. Against camera flashes and microphones... Uh, a hand each lifted paper bearing two signatures from the governments of the two great nations. Murmur and speculation diffused throughout the gathered press before the wary Secretary of State <clears throat> pried open the foreign minister's sake bottle with bare teeth, draught half its vigor, and let loose an emphatic, prophetic cry, Peace in our time! Wow! We act I can't believe we got on the literal first try! I've been auto uh, just you know, saving so much for you know problems. That was awesome! Holy crud! Oh my goodness! We got everything we wanted! You know what? With that much political power, we're going to do that. We'll do it twice. Why not? Because even though we still have... Let's take a look. We still have so many civvies working on stuff, so I'm not even worried about that. That was amazing. Holy bad words. Oh my goodness. Depending on the NPP in different states, we may not be the ones who benefit from this. Ooh, you can't lift yourself up by the bootstraps? The influence of conservative rhetoric will decrease nationwide. Many opponents of President Johnson's welfare measures argue that individual responsibility and hard work on the part of the poor is the only reasonable way to address their woes rather than federal aid. These arguments are purely an anecdotal, with little basis in reality as millions face barriers to entry in the workforce that are often are powerless to overcome. Since they are unable to, through no fault of their own, to escape these conditions, a helping hand from the government is necessary. Spreading this message to Congress and the larger populace will be vital to implementing future programs. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we actually got it. Actually, hold on. Uh, these islands? J oh, yes, please. Get them roads. They need roads down here. Japan does not like to invest in roads, which is a big mistake by Japan, but whatever. Um, I don't know if we had anything else here, really. Oh, any oh. That sucks we didn't get that back, but whatever. Actually, any civvies around here? W what do we actually own around here? So they got... Well, they, at least we got Hawaii back. That's the most important thing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, do we get that back, too? Oh. That's kind of nice. Oh, so it's all one tile. Okay, that's fine. Wow, I just... The winds change in the Pacific. Conservative protest... Social... Ah, so, ah, social Security. Opposition to the Social Security Act has become the latest battleground for the divided American legislature. Attacks and criticisms against the act from factions of both parties become a near-daily occurrence. And the steadfast refusal of the president to amend his piece of legislation is starting to cause considerable consternation in the Democratic wing of the RD party. Privately, never more publicly, the president is being accused of putting his personal agenda before the party and endangering the alliance at the core of the Republican Democrats across the South and their strongholds in the rest of the country. The far-right faction of the NPP is denouncing Social Security in even clearer terms. According to them, the act is an overt attack on the American middle class and subsidy paid to the Negro by the white working man. The strategy appears to be tied Social Security to the issues of civil rights. And according to the reports trickling back to Washington, it seems to be working. Many previously Democratic districts are becoming, beginning to lean NPP, if not already. This morning, the governing party was rocked by news of a handful of lawmakers, including three senators, crossing the aisle and officially switching to the NPP. While their move was condemned by both wings of the RDs in a rare show of unity, then there doesn't seem to be any more defections on the immediate horizon. It was a powerful reminder of the fragile structures underpinning Johnson's coalition. Our ranks go slimmer. It is what it is. I think we've done really well in this episode. Really, really well. Wow. We're very strong, very strong, very strong. I guess, you know, we'll do it one more time. Um, encourage environmental protection monuments. Movements. I apologize for this episode. I cannot speak well at all right now, apparently. <gasps> We're cutting down the deficit now. Oh, considering reports. Um, oh. 
A submerged exile. Oh boy. Um, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Please, please, please go right ahead. A lone wolf can be scared off easier than a whole pack. Oh boy. After everything we've done, conservatives cross the aisle. Opposition to the SSA has become the latest battleground for a divided American legislature. Attacks and criticism against the act from factions of both parties become a near daily occurrence. And the steadfast refusal of the president to amend his piece of legislation is starting to cause considerable consternation. Oh, did we just read this one? Yeah, we already read this one. Our ranks grow even sliver. Wow. Some of the Democrat senators defected the far MPP. That is what it is. Yeah. yeah we, we literally just read that one, huh? Well, we still have 100 political power, so I'm feeling not too bad about it. Dots on the screen. If you want to do that, please go right ahead. We're back in from the east. Nice. Re reassure the party. Cool. An important part of implementation of uh, Johnson's Great Society reforms will be partly will party loyalty. So far, Democratic support for these aid programs has begun strong, but in order to gain lasting support, deals in other areas will have to be made. Through presidential remarks and copious low growling, President and Johnson and his endorsers will need to gain the backing of the Democratic Party to push the next round of bills to Congress. Votes from the base will prove invaluable in the fight to pass further legislation. If you liked about Woodstock, please go right ahead. The Hunter's Quarry. Oh boy, heaven forbid they call her bluff. Oh my God, again. We got it already. So if you want to be like, please go ahead. Awesome. Awesome. The rogue sub. Just, heaven forbid they called her bluff. Holy crap. What is going on in this episode? Holy smoky daddies. The far right is growing. Mr. President, the latest polls are in as well. Not very good news. For the first time, the majority of respondents are saying that they are feeling unsure about the cost of the Great Society. Fears have been stoked by the Democrats and the far-right MPP about higher taxes and more government control of their lives are starting to filter through the public. While the numbers of people who support the Great Society overall are still strong, we should be prepared to face growing backlash as we expand it. There are commentators and political scientists that are talking increasingly over the new polarization of American society, all revolving around your plans with progressives on the left pushing to go even further than the administration wants, and conservatives on the right who are demanding a halt to the growth of the government power and interference in the lives of citizens and undermining states' rights, and the people in the middle who are tired of both extremes. Gotta love it. This is especially evident on the West Coast. While a majority were supportive of the Great Society in the beginning, now support is dropping, and dropping a lot quicker than in other places, namely about the cost. This is only going to get stronger, divide more Americans, and lead to a virtual breakdown of the society into an us-versus-them mentality that'll make it even harder to pass further laws. Can I catch a break? Nah, we don't need a break. LBJ is doing great. Intelligence? Eh, might as well, why not? Because we can. Provide ta oh, tax relief. Oh, that's pretty risky. I'm going to do it, though. That's pretty risky. Oh, we're... Oh! Okay. Oh, we didn't have the political part. God dang, God dang it. Oh, I shouldn't have done that one. That's my bad. So we'll come back and do that one in just a little bit. But reassure the public? Oh, that'll be good. While support from the Democratic establishment is nonetheless important, gaining the approval of the public at large is the most critical aspect of any campaign for large-scale reform. So far, the people have been reluctant to get behind the Great Society concept. To allay the concerns, the president must go public through direct addresses via the radio, TV, and other mediums. The aim of these measures is not only to encourage voting and like-minded members of Congress, but also pressure current Congress members. My apologies. I should have read that one before I did that one. I didn't realize we'd have to have, what, 50 political power? 75 political power? Holy crap, that's so much. But we do get 1.5 every single day, which is pretty nice. Not gonna lie, that's pretty nice, so I wasted time with that. My apologies. I should not have done that, but... Nice. Nice. Now we're not gonna touch this at all now. Um... Moment to reflect would be nice, but we're very strong. We're strong, very strong, very strong, strong. I and mean, we're doing great. Now, obviously, we're we're like dividing America so so incredibly badly that Gus Hall is looking better than Yaki, but whatever. Uh, but George Wallace is looking really good, like forty two percent. That's pretty nice. Oh man, I hope we can get up. Oh, I don't think we can get up to seventy five political power anytime soon. Ooh, you get more stability, which is nice. Reassure the public. Ooh. Break with the Democrats. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Maybe we can do this again after we do this. Because you guys recommended we do break with the Democrats. And with the, the Democrats are just going to like stop us in a lot of places. So uh, our duty to the country, we're going to have to pay for this all somehow. Our duty is to the people. Our Social Security Act would be more impressive. So we'll come back and do this one maybe later on. But break with the Democrats. Token reassurances to the party establishment have proven insufficient to gaining their full support and push for the Social Security and for the programs, unfortunately. Democratic leaders have failed to listen to the very constituents who elected them to their privileged positions and they have been unceasingly reluctant to commit to President Johnson's initiative. For this reason, ties must be cut with this corrupt establishment if any future progress is to be made. Hopefully, a new coalition can be formed to finish what the President has started. Daring to dream? Oh, wait, no. Did we... Fix one of these things? Oh, yeah, it was... No, no, that's fashion of unity. 
Wasn't it the one that we got from, like, with the Japanese? Like, wasn't that supposed to help us? Huh. Yep, whatever. Nice, that one's gonna be done. Now uh, there goes Egypt. And we'll go that one next. Nice, fast research speed. Oh, there we go. Now we can do the other one if we want to. We'll give it a little bit of time, though, so. 69 World Series, if you'd like to build that, please go right ahead. I want to strengthen pro-American sentiment, please. Please. Break with the Dems, and we'll finish off with our debt duty to the people? Probably. Oh, we're going to lose political power doing this one, too. So this is transformation under President LBJ. The Democratic Party has become the party of the people, by the people, and for the people. The game further support from the public for social security. It's time to entertain a different route of appealing to voters. Through different outreach, further outreach, the people must understand that the President and his loyalists in Congress truly believe in the cause of helping the needy, and that the party is adopted to mandate to assist the people whenever there is suffering or injustice. A win for the Alliance. Ensuring the passage of the SSA would be a major test for President Johnson and the strength of his alliance with the NPP Center, which doesn't exist. As a test, it appears they have now passed. The act passed through Congress without major revision and will cast a strong, wide social security net for Americans for years to come. Henry Scoop Jackson has hailed the bill as a triumph of bipartisan cooperation and a great victory for the people of the U.S. Within the RD. It's very clear now that President Johnson's progressives are in ascendancy, with conversations and planning focusing almost exclusively on how to build on the roots of victory and little energy being spent on soothing ruffled feathers or bringing the Democratic wing back into the conversation. Among Democratic senators, a sense of unease is growing as they find the center of gravity and the party moving further and further away from them, with little opportunity to correct its course lest they be cut off from the decision making entirely. This unease extends to voters and traditional Democratic strongholds. Many are questioning their commitment to a party that they increasingly find themselves at the margins of. They'll come around. Oh, we get some political power, but let's finish off with reading. Uh, we're going to we're going to pay. Uh, we're going to have to pay for all this somehow. Well, the benefits of Social Security are desirable to most. Both Congress and the public will have to be informed as to how the program will be paid for. Obviously, frequent assistance payments of millions of retired and disabled Americans will cost hundreds of billions of dollars, and that money will need to come from somewhere. The current plan is to add a Social Security to existing federal income taxes, tapping into a large and a sustainable source of revenue. However, this will not sit well with many voters who are concerned about how the money will be handled, and additional assurances will need to be made. But if you enjoyed this very successful episode, please do consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue to improve our society and make it great. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.